We are about to get ourselves into a pretty concerning weather pattern. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about the threat area for potential severe weather outbreak and then look back at some analogs. That's where we look into the past to predict the future. So we're going to show you a couple of those. Then, of course, we're going to have the timeline of that severe weather event. We're also going to break down the ingredients. And by the end of this video, you are going to know what to look for to see if this severe weather potential is going to come into fruition. So stick around for that. Also, stick around at the end of the video. This system going to slide to the east and explode into parts of New England. We could have a huge snowstorm ongoing as we round out the first week of April. So a whole lot of weather to talk about before we get into this video. If you do want to stay updated on all things weather, hit that subscribe button, especially as we roll into severe weather season and hurricane season. I'd love to know what the weather is doing in your area. Post in the comments as we move forward. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right, so here is the deal. This is the day four outlook. SBC Storm Prediction Center typically has that highlight for day one through three with their marginal all the way up to high. But from day four through eight, they mark it with 15% and 30%. Again, you have that extra, that heightened awareness area, that 30% from the Texas-Oklahoma border rolling through parts of Arkansas into Kansas, into Missouri as well. So that nice big chunk there, that's where we are really gonna be looking for on Monday, April 1st. That threat area, it goes down a little bit. At least the potential goes down, the probability. But that area expands to the east, including parts of Tennessee into the deep south, even into the mid-Atlantic. So again, a widespread severe weather event is going to be possible as we start April. I want to show you the timeline now. Of course, this is important as we get into Monday, April 1st. Really, as we get into the later stages of the afternoon into the early evening, this is going to be 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. And you see what's starting to pop here as they move the southwest of Oklahoma City into parts of uh, West Texas, North Central and West Texas. That's where the event gets going. But look at the explosion here. This is the higher resolution future, future radar and uh, the European solution for this. And you just see all of the nasty weather going on, the darker purples and whites, really intense thunderstorms being forecast here by the model. We see that continue late into the evening. Now, this is getting into really late. Monday night, April 1st, into the early morning hours of April 2nd. You see all the darker purples here. Potential for supercell thunderstorms, which could include tornadoes, late into the evening, into the early morning hours, of course, after sunset. That makes these severe weather events much more dangerous whether uh, what, because a lot of people are asleep. This is going to slide to the east then on Tuesday. So this is going to be April 2nd. We see the severe weather threat potential, the darker oranges, yellows, and reds indicating the stronger thunderstorms and really heavy rain sliding into the deep south. There you go by 9, 10 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon into the evening. We're still dealing with the potential for some really, really nasty thunderstorms. So now that you have the timeline, I want to show you what some of the analogs are saying. I think that's extremely important. It kind of gives uh, a basis of what we're looking for. What I'm going to show you here are two different analogs. One is from Colorado State University. The other is from uh, SIPS. So you see this one here. This is the CSU one. And if you're familiar with any of this, then you know what these analogs are. And again, it's taking the past to look toward the future. You see that dark purple. That is a higher probability. That is a 45%. There's even a hatched area there, meaning that significant severe weather threat. So while that percentage is higher, again, SPC only goes up to 30%, but it kind of gives us an early heads up here that we can looking, be looking at something pretty significant as we get into April 1st and those areas that the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted. Now, the SIPS analog isn't as bullish, but it does have that general area highlighted, that North Texas area, Eastern Oklahoma, into Kansas, Missouri, and then into parts of Arkansas. Forgot to mention earlier in the video, if you're interested in the snow side, I do have chapters listed in the description that you can kind of bounce around. I want to show you now the complete setup, and then we're going to get into the ingredients, which I think are important. This big bowling ball, this big upper low that slides down the California coast, and California, the west coast of the U.S., getting black blasted with this system as we speak, it rolls in and then that induces that negative tilt there. That negative tilt we talk about, that's a positive tilt what I just drew on the screen, but the negative tilt extends back from the northwest to southeast. It enhances differences in temperature in the atmosphere and it helps to really invigorate the surface low pressure a little bit more and helps to bring these, uh, these bigger time weather systems that roll across the country. 
I wanted to show you this too. This is going to be the main thing that I'm focused on, at least for the tornado potential with this system. This is going to be on April 1st, and you see a lot of moving arrows on your screen. That orange color represents the wind at the surface. That blue color represents the winds at about 10,000 feet. I illustrated both of these heights on here to show you what wind shear is. Again, it's one of the main components when you're talking about tornadic development. At the surface, you see the orange here in that big severe weather threat area that was right on through here. Here, the wind is out of the south and east but note the blue 10,000 feet up we have the wind out of the south and west so that induces wind shear that's turning of the winds with height what that does for tornadic development is it induces a rolling motion like this in the atmosphere when the thunderstorms develop it forces up that rolling motion and then we get it to become that horizontal roll becomes a vertical roll and then if given other mechanisms really scientific roof length downdraft all of that stuff uh lifting condensation level height that's getting really really into meteorological jargon but if all of that else is there we have low level wind shear to help kind of tighten up the vortex that's when we can get that rolling motion to get the ground and then develop a tornado so what i'm trying to say is long story short we have that component here so if those storms become discrete or isolated or by themselves they're going to have uh some things some ingredients that are needed for tornado development i wanted to show you just taking all of that noise out this is something we call a significant tornado parameter and it takes a bunch of different things a bunch of different ingredients and then it spits out if you will uh some colors on this screen and where you see the darker oranges and reds almost pink color this is where we're looking for the potential anyway for some tornadoes especially late on tuesday or late on Monday, April 1st, into early Tuesday, you see that threat level does go down a little bit. Again, the brighter the color, the higher the threat, and you see those colors go down. It's certainly not zero, so we're going to be looking for that in here as well through parts of the Mid-Atlantic into the Deep South as we move into Tuesday, April 2nd. Here we go, same kind of deal, except this is going to be the hail parameter. It takes a bunch of different things that looks at them, and you see where we have the potential for some really big hail. If we get those supercells to develop as well, there we go back into San Antonio again, through Central Texas up into Dallas, a couple of different corridors of big-time instability where we can generate some really, really big hail. So be on the guard for that. Damaging wind is also going to be a threat. The damaging straight-line wind as well. Now, that is the severe weather component. We are going to be watching that through the weekend. The same system then rolls up into Michigan, into the Great Lakes area. You see there's some snow in Michigan. This is going to be an April 3rd in the morning. But a secondary storm then develops off the coast. And look at this. This is the European rendition. Look at the snow falling from central Pennsylvania into New York, into New England. I think it's going to be close again on the 95 corridor. That part is still a little hazy but you see here from maine into nova scotia in the new brunswick some heavy snow coming our way at least according to the european this continues into uh as we move into newfoundland as well some lighter snow and then the heavier stuff eventually falls as we get into april 5th and 6th the gfs though it tells the same story it looks very very similar there we go in michigan april 3rd eight o'clock the snow then erupts as we move into parts of upstate New York, into the Northeast, into New England, into Maine again, into New Brunswick, into parts of Nova Scotia. It's not as cold in the GFS rendition for us into Nova Scotia, but nonetheless, there is likely going to be a bigger coastal system developing as the tail end of the system that's going to bring the severe weather to the middle part of the country rounds out. So that is something that we are going to watch. If you recall, we had a video out in February that we said that we couldn't completely write snow off in April. And I know it happens from time to time, of course, but with how terrible, if you love snow, the winter has been for the Northeast, I told you that March, end of March, early April, that is when the pattern finally got right for a winter storm here we go this could be it again not going to claim victory on that yet you guys know that things change on a dime but certainly the pattern is there models are biting on and we're only what six days away from this so we're within that seven days where 
it certainly doesn't become irresponsible anymore to show something like this. Now, snowfall totals, those maps that you see there, those are going to fluctuate. That's why I haven't showed you those as well. But there's going to be the potential for a plowable snow in the Northeast as we move into April 3rd and then especially April 4th, rounding out on April 5th. All right, guys, we have you covered. Be safe. Stay weather aware in the plains, mid-Atlantic, and deep south. Could be a really significant severe weather outbreak unfolding as we move into early next week. And then again, the fun side of this, if you like snow in April, coming to the Northeast uh, as we round out the first week of April. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers. If you want to join the team, hit that subscribe button. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we will catch you next time.